welcome back and um, I'm Tegra for those of you who don't know and today it's gonna be just something quick something brief for teen talk so make sure you're inviting everybody into the live make sure you're sending this link around make sure you're getting the word out because today we are going to be talking about new beginnings and um, just make sure you let everybody know what's going on bring everybody into the live and um, and yeah just for those of you who are already here what we're going to be talking about is just a new beginning and um, basically a new beginning being what you can do especially during this time of coronavirus once again obviously it's a global pandemic it's not something that only affects you but it's something that affects everybody and it is a good idea for those of us who feel like we may be lacking a little faith those of us who feel like we may be lacking a little other aspects of life now is the time to be able to get yourself back onto level one now is the time to be able to get yourself back at that head start and it's a great time for you to obviously have a new beginning so once again while i'm saying all this make sure you guys are liking the video make sure you guys are subscribing to congo please though make sure you guys are following the facebook make sure that you guys are following our pages on instagram and that you're also following us on facebook so yeah make sure you guys are checking this out make sure that you guys are here listening out for us and make sure that you guys are up and telling everybody what's going on so while you guys keep sharing the link while you guys keep letting everybody know what's going on once again for those who don't know this is right here is teen talk and uh, we're just going to be talking about new beginnings so while you guys are bringing everybody into the live now it's just a time for me to do a quick little prayer Father God, I thank you right now in this moment in time, O oh Lord, for you've allowed me once again to gather here, O oh God. You've given me this opportunity, O oh God, where I'm able to speak your word and where I'm able to do your will, O oh Lord. I thank you for it. It is not only by my might, O oh God, but it is by your strength, O oh God. It is by your grace that I'm able to stand here today, O oh Lord. May your will be done. May your grace be fulfilled. And may your kingdom continue to reign upon our lives. In Jesus' name we so pray. Amen. So you guys, I hope you are continuously sharing the video. I hope you are letting everybody know to come straight here. And yeah, I think we're just gonna head into it. So while you guys are sharing the live, make sure you let everybody know once again to follow our Instagram, Congo Muklisto, and also make sure to check out our Facebook page at Congo Muklisto TV. So yeah. For those who just joined, what I said we were going to be speaking about today is a new beginning. And in this time of coronavirus and in the time where we are all in self-isolation, we're all in quarantine, now is a better time than ever to start a new aspect of your life. Now is a better time to restart something that you left before and what i mean by that is is that it could be a simple goal that you set such as losing weight studying more or it could be something more intricate such as being able to redevelop your christian life there is many many aspects of a new beginning within the bible and the main known one is when god created the world back in genesis so for those of us who are watching and feel like now is the time where I feel like I've been lacking in certain areas, now is the time where I feel like I haven't done much, now is the time where I feel like there's so much more that I could do, not only for myself but for God, then now is definitely the time to do it. I believe that God has given us this time to be able to not only develop ourselves but also to grow as Christians and also to grow as servants of the Lord so once again it could be something as simple as making the goal to lose weight many of us in the new year decided to make the decision of having a new year's resolution now we made those new year's resolutions because it was a new year and we felt like we have left everything in the past and we felt like we had left everything behind us but here's the thing not many of us have stuck to those new year's resolutions and one thing that a lot of us tend to do is we tend to 
hold on to something new we tend to believe that once it is a new year or once it is a new month that that's when we should have a new beginning but that's not the case i personally believe that you are able to have a new beginning any day any second any time of the year all through round so it shouldn't just be a case where if you feel like you failed at your goal in 2020 january 1st 2020 you feel like you failed at your goal i personally feel like you should try pick up your goal again next the next day so that's a thought that a lot of us have a lot of us have the tendency to pick to create goals and then wait for the next month to come around when we feel like we haven't fulfilled them that shouldn't be the case especially with those christians that shouldn't be the case every day that we have on this earth is a new opportunity to seize the day every day that we have on this earth is a new time where we're able to do the things that god has allowed us to do to do the things that god is has given to us to be able to do so that being said Having new beginnings, especially in this time of quarantine, is a very, very good idea. Not only because there's really not much to do, but also because you can zone in on whatever it is that you are trying to do wholeheartedly. You can zone in on it and you can dedicate all your time to it and with no distractions, without having the pressure of doing other things. Yes, there is still some of us working from home. Yes, there is some of us that are still going to school online. However, it's all about prioritizing. The time taken to get to all those places is now being completely cut out and that can be invested in doing things such as reading your Bible or whatever other goal that you have set for this quarantine. So, what does Christians need to stop doing? Definitely, when coming to begin new beginnings is living in the past. A lot of us immediately are so discouraged to move forward. A lot of us are so discouraged to live in the present because of what we have done in our past. And a lot of us, not just Christians, but a lot of us as human beings in general, believe that the past defines who we are when that is not the case in my opinion i believe that that isn't the scenario at all if you allow your past to define you that's something that you have done however that shouldn't be the situation for anybody who believes in christ becomes a new creation and even for those that don't they shouldn't be able they shouldn't sit there and decide that my past is what is going to define me instead they should be sitting there thinking that you know what today is a new day and today is a day where i'm going to make a better person of myself today is a new day and today is the day where i'm going to improve myself today is a new day and i'm going to invest in something that will bring me back multitudes of joy that will bring me back something that i've been missing that will replenish that that will multiply the flock amongst all of us so definitely that is something that we have to stop doing as people not just as christians but as people stop letting the past define you if you let the past define you it will definitely bog you down i believe that if you let the past define you it is something that is going to anchor you into the ground and once you're anchored into the ground under under all the water is very difficult to get back up especially when you're the only person who's able to pull yourself out of that so a hundred percent i do think that looking back in the past is something that shouldn't be done although it's difficult you need to speak positivity over yourself you need to speak positive things into into existence where anything is possible with christ so um i personally feel like all things in my lifetime prior to being baptized made it impossible for god to love me and that was obviously highly mistaken the idea of my sin being greater than me led me to a place where i was like very doubtful led me to a place where i felt like i couldn't really do much and let me to a place where i felt like you know what i'm already the way that i am so what is the point and i thought that because of that that situation allowed me to now think negatively of myself which isn't something that should be happening which isn't something that i should be doing so definitely it's all about your mindset if your mindset is not good if your mindset is something that you feel like 
is bogging you down it's definitely a good idea to rejig that it's definitely a good idea to change that and it's definitely a good idea to make sure that you speak positive things over your life that you speak positive things into your mindset as well for your mindset can change a lot of aspects of your life and if you continuously think negative then it is something that is going to affect you negatively so what i did was i used my sin as an excuse to not believe to not believe at all which left me to neglect god for the longest time even when i didn't know that he was there even when i didn't understand why he was there or why he continued to protect me the fact that i used my sin as an excuse the fact that i used my past as an excuse was such a bad idea it wasn't even an idea in the first place but it's something that we do unintentionally and it's normal as humans it's something that we don't see ourselves doing but because i did that that in itself took me back that set me back and because it set me back there was no way that i could move forward all that time that i had spent being stuck behind being stuck in the memories being stuck in the past i cannot get back one of the things that's obviously very limited is time you can't buy time you can't bribe anybody for time you can't travel back and you can't travel forwards either you can't accelerate time anyway but that's why we should be able to know how to divide our time we should know how to use it wisely we should know how to use it not to look backwards but to look forwards and look into the future and plan for the future and use the present time that we have now to be able to set things aside for our future selves for our future families for whatever future plans that we may have and whatever future plans that god excuse me also may have for us and um, I knew at certain points in my life that there was somebody I was disappointing. There are so many points in my life where I knew, no, there's somebody greater than me that definitely isn't happy with what I'm doing now. That there's somebody greater than me who definitely isn't pleased with what I'm doing now because of the way that I have lived. No, not mean because of the way I've lived, but because of the way that I have thought. If your thought process is negative, it's not a good thing. It even says in the Bible in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 verse 17 it says therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation the old has passed away behold the new has come so even that just there in the bible lets us know that anybody who is in christ or believes in him they will become a new creation for the old is gone and the new is here that in itself says that the minute that you believe in god the minute that you begin to serve christ and you accept to serve christ and that is something that you willingly want to do immediately your past no longer existed your past is no longer there that is not to say that you should completely disregard your past and be like no nope, yeah i was never that person nope i've been like this i've been serving god the whole time that is not to say that you should discontinue th that you should disregard what your past was because your past is something that can be used as a testimony things that have happened in your past life can be used as a testimony and that's something that we need to understand that although our pasts may be mortifying although they may be embarrassing although there's something that we don't necessarily want to remember there are definitely things that we can pick from them we can pick lessons from our past self we can pick morals from our past selves we can pick out the flaws and the perfections and where we went wrong we can analyze all of that and we can realize and apply that to present situations and also future situations which is a good thing about our past lives but it is not to say that you should completely disregard it because they do come in handy for when you are trying to get other souls from when you are trying to bring other people to christ other people who don't see christ the way that you see him well, obviously search for a reason to go towards him and this is something that you can present to people and say like yes i was once like this i was once like you i was once addicted to drugs i was once addicted to things i shouldn't be addicted to i was once mad over social media i was once um mad over food like it's just little things like that i used to idolize this i used to idolize that once you show people that this is what i actually used to be like and then they see then then they see the person who is speaking now has completely transformed from the person they're describing that right there let's not know that there is a god that right there shows them like wow then 
there's no way that this transformation could just come out of nowhere. There's no way that this transformation could just come out of thin air. Something had had to have happened for this transformation to come by. And so, definitely and obviously, you speaking about your testimony lets all these people know that they're no different from you. That your sin is not greater than their sin and their sin is no longer greater than yours. For they're all at the same equilibrium. So, yeah. Once again, like I said today, the theme is new beginnings. And when pursuing new beginnings, key thing is you are not to look backwards. Because looking backwards will blind you in the hindsight. It's say if you are driving a car. If you are driving a car, you're not necessarily told to look backwards while you're in the middle of driving. If I'm on the M50 and I'm in my car like this and I need to see who's behind me, I'm not going to turn around like this and do a 360 because that will cause an accident in front of me. And if you think about it, if you take that analogy and you apply it to real life, say I am trying to convert to God, I'm trying to be a servant of God and say I was constantly looking back at, at what I had done say if God is coming to me and telling me my daughter I will love you I will protect you I will care for you unconditionally but while God is telling me this from here I'm standing back here I'm here and my past is behind me and I'm constantly looking back but what about this but what if I do this but what if I do that but what if this but what if that that constant bickering and that constant referral to your past will essentially cause you to crash just like a car it will essentially cause you to look forward and the minute that you do look forward your future is gone time has gone time is disintegrated whatever it is that you are working towards has now disappeared because of how much time you spent looking in the past so definitely like i said when pursuing new beginnings you are not to look backwards look ahead into the future and don't focus on the things that you did that you once did in your past because it is a waste of time one thing that a lot of people say one motivational quote i guess that a lot of people say is is that you spend all your time wishing on what you could have had on what you could have done differently rather than learning a lesson that's definitely something a lot of people do when they look at their past they don't assess the situation and they don't analyze it they don't see wow well that may have been a dumb decision that I made, but I've learned not to do this again. They don't see that. What people do is pick out the flaws. And what people do is they pick out a situation and they think of what they would have done differently. They will sit there and they'll think, well, I wish I could go back in time. Or I wish I could rewind time. I wish I shouldn't. I didn't do that. I wish I did this instead. I wish I had that there instead. And because they think like that, that once again is letting them waste time that right there is letting them waste time in that present moment and because they're doing that they're no longer able to look forward they're no longer to look ahead into the future the past is the past and it's definitely something that you cannot change and that is something that a lot of us need to be able to acknowledge that once the past is the past that you cannot change it it is not something that can be it's not something that's malleable the past is something that is set in stone and because it's set in stone know that everything happens for a reason from the good to the bad every bad situation happens for a reason although we suffer although we may grieve although we may feel pain although we may feel lost although we may be upset everything happens for a reason certain things happen so that you could be built for a better person to be a better person some some things happen so that you can build resistance some other things happen because god wants you to be able to be able to, to grow the strength grow the knowledge certain things happen for certain reasons and then other things happen for reasons that we are unknown to us until late late stages but the reasons that i've listed are simply the basic ones are the ones that are the most obvious and the ones that are the most understandable sometimes you'll never get a reason and that is not something for you to question that god knows why he does everything there's god, god understands why he does all the things that he does and if you feel like you don't understand obviously go to your father and pray and you ask and if you feel like you've got no response or if you feel like god has told you not to worry about it then it's something that you simply don't need to worry about there are some things that the human mind cannot understand there's some things that god does that is so incredibly great that not even the human mind has the capacity to understand so definitely if you feel like there's something that god 
isn't telling you if you feel like there's something that you haven't understood just know that everything does happen for a reason isaiah 43 18 says do not dwell on the past and verse 19 says i am making a way in the wilderness and that in itself once again just reassures us the bible right there is just reassuring us again that we shouldn't look back in the past and verse 19 says a lot because it says i am making a way in the wilderness what exactly is the wilderness well the wilderness is the forest is the bushes outside is the wild animals that we see is the wild berries the poisonous plants that's what the wilderness is and for the wilderness to be outside like that for god to say that he's making a way in all that thick shrub in all that greenery that you think there's no way that i could walk past in that forest that looks so big that looks so vast that looks so dangerous that you can that you wouldn't even want to enter that looks so taunting for god to be able to say i will make a way in the wilderness for you says a lot so highlighting isaiah 43 verse 18 to 19 once again it says do not dwell in the past and verse 19 which i would emphasize personally says i'm making a way in the wilderness if that verse 19 doesn't give you hope then i honestly don't know what will for god to say i'm making a way in the wilderness you guys the wilderness is mad you know you know yourself the wilderness is crazy so once again forgot to be able to say that he is able to do something like that just not only does it prove his strength but it also proves his power and it also proves what he's capable of doing and what he's also capable of doing with you if he is waking away in the wilderness for you then there's clearly something that you have that is amazing to god so in order for us to move away from our past we need a heavenly mindset now what a heavenly mindset is is definitely something that we should all invest in having a heavenly mindset is a mindset that's positive is a mindset that is active is a mindset that is alert and once we have that type of mindset we're able to not focus on the negatives because that's what the human mind naturally does the human mind naturally goes into an exam center and thinks oh i'm gonna fail it doesn't think i will succeed it thinks i will fail that is what the human mind naturally does but as a christian we need to have a heavenly mindset a heavenly mindset where we can already envision all the things that god that god has planned we can already see god's wonders and will coming into action we can already see such things colossians chapter 3 verse 2 says colossians chapter 3 verse 2 says set your mind on things that are above not on things that are on the earth so once again that does plug into your mindset that right there lets us know that if you focus on things that are above bear in mind when something is below you it probably isn't of much value but when you focus on things that are above you right there that lets us know that not only is it ahead and into the future and it's futuristic and it's something that we haven't discovered before and it's something that is on the verge of being discovering that right there lets us know that we should take our mindset and then we should change it we should change our mindset into something more positive let me clarify this when i say from your past um i don't mean to completely abandon it so once again let me clarify that when i say move away from your past i don't necessarily mean completely abandon it do not completely disregard it and it's something that you shouldn't be ashamed of although at the moment in time where you are on the brink of giving your life to christ and you feel like but this is so embarrassing how could god continue to love me if i have done something so embarrassing like this if i have done something as shameful as this just know that your testimony is not embarrassing your testimony is if anything is something to be proud of it's something that you have overcame willingly your testimony your past is something that you are able to overcome there's something that you were able to overthrow because a lot of our testimonies involve things that are with addiction involve things that do involve do involve idolizing um or whatever it is that you have past tense hopefully and um, so definitely it's something to be proud of if you have overcome such large mountains like that if you have overcome such difficult things such as that it's definitely something to be proud of it's not something to be ashamed of especially in the time where we all are in now especially in a very judgmental era that we live in it's not something that you should be afraid of and it's not something that you should be ashamed of so 
definitely know that your past is a testimony your past is a testimony that can help out people and your past is something that can definitely open the eyes of somebody else although you may feel like it may not have helped anybody your testimony can touch other people and can let other people know like wow i didn't realize that she was like this i didn't know that that's what she used to do i didn't know that she became that person and look at what god has transformed her to be like that's something amazing in itself being able to share what you were and how god and you developed your relationship and showing people how god is able to radiate out through you and being able to show people what you have become and who you have become is genuinely something amazing it's something great honestly it's definitely something that you guys should take into account that your past is not to be ashamed of so key points for today well when pursuing new beginnings you are not to look backwards looking backwards can get you into a rut it can complete it can bring you to a complete halt and if anything when you are moving into the future it can definitely alter whatever plans that you have for yourself or delay whatever plans that god has for yourself so another thing is in order to move away from our pasts we all need a heavenly mindset a heavenly mindset is one where we're able to focus on things that are above us and not focus on the things that are the are, that are below us if anything is below us we shouldn't be having the effort to look down upon it we should be able to look up and up only and realize that our future is coming towards us another point is is that our testimonies are key our past is not something to be ashamed of although that is easier said than done our past is something that will eventually trigger the key that will move the key and allow other people to be able to come close to christ as well one of the things that i absolutely love saying one of my sayings is that only god can turn a mess into a message a test into a testimony a uh, trial into triumph and a victim into a victory once again i'll say it again so only god can turn a mess into a message a test into a testimony a trial into a triumph and a victim into a victor so for god to be able to do all these things that he, that i literally just listed there it takes perseverance it takes strength it takes energy it takes dedication and it takes consistency and above all things it takes a desire you must desire to have your relationship with god restart again so definitely in this time of quarantine it is a good idea definitely to take advantage of this situation to take advantage of the fact that we are all in isolation for the next two weeks exactly from today it is definitely a good idea that you take time to be able to restart your journey with god and not to look back and not to doubt yourself and not to think that because of my past that god is no longer capable of loving me your sin is not an excuse for not being able to find god's love you shouldn't think about your life of what it was because that's what it is that's what it was what your past was is the past it's not the present nor will it be your future because you have control over whatever it is that you feel like you are doing in this moment in time you have the capacity you have the time god is giving you the free will of time now it's just your decision to figure out how you spend it now is your choice now is your time to figure out how you're going to divide your time and how you're going to prioritize your time now is your time so those of you who have watched i hope that you guys picked up on the message that i was giving up today a new beginning is definitely something that is necessary in this time and it's definitely something that you guys should definitely make sure to do in this time that we are all here so hopefully you guys enjoyed this message i hope that it was relatable as well and i hope that it definitely motivated you guys to understand what was being said today like i said before make sure that when you're pursuing new beginnings that you are not to look backwards so make sure you always go for it honestly just look up make sure you go forward make sure you're moving forward make sure you keep your eyes on the prize on the prize being eternal life with god make sure that you keep your focus up with god and make sure that you are simply focused on being up there in heaven with him so before we go i'm just gonna sing a little song 
and just to ease the night for you guys so yeah we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you are we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you are right so you guys i hope you guys enjoyed today's message and before we close we're obviously gonna do a quick closing prayer I thank you, Father God, once again for this gracious opportunity that you were able to give to me about speaking about new beginnings. I pray, oh God, that not only myself, but whoever is listening, oh God, may be able to take your word into heed, oh God. I pray that once we have these next two weeks, oh God, that we may be able to begin with you once again, oh God. May it be like a newborn baby, oh God, learning to be with their mother, oh God. May we be able to develop our relationship with you once again, oh Lord, if we feel like we have lost, oh God. May we be able to remain consistent, oh God, and may we be persistent oh god may our desires be solely focused on you oh god may our goal solely be to increase our relationship with you oh lord in jesus name we so pray amen so you guys thanks for checking us out today make sure you guys 